Hello and welcome to Watch Releases Recap for the week of January 26th until February the 2nd. Let's begin with Grand Seiko and their new model reference SBGX355, also known as the Snowflake Quartz. The Snowflake is arguably Grand Seiko's most iconic model. I reviewed one and so have many other people. The two complaints that most people have with this model, number one, that awkward power reserve on the dial the second thing, the awkward sizing. 41 millimeter case diameter doesn't seem like it's big, but for some reason on that model, it just doesn't really work. Plus it's a little bit on the thicker side. With this new model, Grand Seiko has addressed both of those issues, one more successfully than the other. So first of all, that awkward power reserve indicator is now gone because this watch is powered by the Quartz Grand Seiko Movement Caliber 9F62. Now, if you were to rank Quartz movements on a scale from one to 10, this would be near the top. This would be that near 10 out of 10. It is a super accurate movement to within plus or minus 10 seconds per year. Plus you can adjust that seconds hand so you can have it always hitting the marks, which is important thing. I know it bothers a lot of people, including myself, when the seconds hand on the quartz watch doesn't hit the mark exactly. I think quartz movements are becoming more widely accepted in the watch community, so I have no problem with Grand Seiko going the quartz route. The small issue that I have with this watch is its size. So as I mentioned, the regular Snowflake is 41 millimeters. They decided to use 37 millimeter case diameter for this watch. Now 37 millimeter case diameter could work. Like for example, a Nomos Club Sport is 37 millimeters. And I think that size works really well for that watch. But I feel like for this watch specifically, it might be a little bit too small. Why not go for a 39 millimeters? Just really nail it. So there are no questions. If this watch was 39, I think would be near perfect. With the smaller case diameter plus the quartz movement, the watch is also a bit thinner. This one is 10.6 millimeters in case thickness and it's about 45 millimeters from one leg to another. The case is still made out of titanium, including the bracelet. It still has 100 meters of water resistance and it features that Zaratsu polish. As far as the pricing and availability goes, this will not be a limited edition, so you should be able to pick it up from your local Grand Seiko AD, no problem, and they are priced at 4,200 euros. Last week was the LVMH watch week, so we have a lot of LVMH watches to go through. I'm not gonna highlight all of the releases, just the most interesting ones like this, Zenith Chronomaster, original triple calendar. I'm calling it early unless we see a ton of other great watch releases. I have a feeling that this watch will make it onto my best watch releases of the year video at the end of this year. That's how much I love this release. Zenith has been sort of up and down with the releases recently and I think this one is a high up. I really love this model. So it comes in a few different color variations. My favorite is this gray dial version. I think that looks killer. It's based on some of the vintage El Primero models. Uh, basically the architecture of El Primero chronograph was based on the triple calendar with the moon phase. So this movement has already architecture built in for these complications and design wise, it looks so damn sharp. It has that Zenith aesthetic. It has that sort of feeling of a vintage timepiece in a modern case with modern finishes and modern materials. Speaking of the case, it's made out of stainless steel. It has a 38 millimeter diameter. It's only 13 millimeters thickness, which is super impressive for a case that has an automatic chronograph movement with triple calendar and a moon phase complication. Other watch companies should take note of that. It is powered by the Caliber El Pamero 3610 automatic chronograph movement. It's a column wheel movement with 35 joules beating at 36,000 vibrations per hour. And it still has a pretty solid 60 hours of power reserve. The watch could be bought on the stainless steel bracelet or a leather strap. I always say go for the stainless steel bracelet, especially since the price points are not that different. On the stainless steel bracelet, it costs 13,400 Swiss francs. And on the leather strap, it costs 12,900 Swiss francs. So the difference is only about 
500 Swiss francs, which is not too bad. But that's not the only Zenith release this week. There's actually another El Primero. This one is called the Chronomaster Sport Green. So the Chronomaster line was released, I think, in 2021, and it right away became super popular with watch enthusiasts. It's a bit of an alternative programming to the Speedmaster and to the Daytona, and I think it actually makes a lot of sense. Last year, they released a variation of the Chronomaster Sport with a green bezel and a green dial. It was a limited edition in collaboration with Aaron Rodgers. When I did a recap for that week, I really loved that green color, the green dial, and everything else about that watch. I think it just looked really good all together. Well, now this new model is no longer a limited release. It is slightly different from the Aaron Rodgers one, but overall it looks very similar. And now it is a part of regular catalog. It is no longer limited edition. The only differences that I can spot between this edition and the Aaron Rodgers limited edition is the color of the sub register at the three o'clock position. As you can see, this color has that iconic blue versus the other one had a little bit of a blue gray color. I actually think that blue gray color looked better, but there's no question that this blue at that sub register is very recognizable as a Zenith El Primero color combination. Other than the new color combination, everything else about this watch is exactly the same as the Chronomaster Sport. It comes in the same case diameter, made out of stainless steel, 41 millimeters by 13.6 millimeters in case thickness. It is still powered by the same movement, El Primero caliber 3600, which is a high beat movement beating at 36,000 vibrations per hour. So you can measure one tenth of a second. It also has 35 joules and 60 hours of power reserve. The price point for this model I think is very reasonable. It costs 10,900 Swiss francs for the one on the bracelet and 10,400 Swiss francs for the one on the rubber strap. I'd say go for the one on the bracelet and just buy an extra rubber strap as an addition. Next up, the new Tech Hoyer Carrera Date Plasma Diavan Guard. I wanted to highlight this model for several reasons. Number one, I think it's very interesting that Tech Hoyer here decided to go with lab created or lab grown diamonds instead of the naturally mined diamonds. It's sort of rare for the watch industry to embrace these lab grown diamonds and I hope more and more companies do embrace that because hopefully it will drive the price point of these watches down. Plus it's just better for humanity in general to use these diamonds as opposed to uh, mine diamonds, but hey, that's just my personal opinion. Either way, it is just interesting that they chose to go with uh, lab grown diamonds. Second thing that I wanted to highlight is the fact that this watch looks exactly like the Citizen, doesn't it? I mean, the Citizen doesn't have a diamond studded dial, but everything else looks very similar, including the case shape. So this one here has that giant diamond instead of the Tag Heuer logo closer to the 12 o'clock position. It also features a white gold case. I couldn't find the exact price point of this watch, but I can tell you it's not going to be cheap. What is a little puzzling to me is that they went this extra mile going with the baguette diamonds on the dial plus that giant yellow diamond and all white gold case, yet they chose a caliber 7 automatic movement, which is essentially a slightly modified Celita SW300, which you can find in watches for around 500 bucks, which is so strange because why would you create this exquisite timepiece and choose such a cheap movement? I don't know how popular this watch is going to be. My guess is not very popular. Speaking of Tech Heuer, let's actually talk about another Tech Heuer release, the Carrera Chronograph Tourbillon glass box with the green dial. Last year, Tech Heuer Carrera celebrated 60th anniversary and they released a new glass box case shape, which I quite like. I think it's a very sharp watch. In the same year, they also released a new 42 millimeter chronograph with the tourbillon in the same glass box case. As you can see that last year's release featured a blue dial with an orange seconds hand, very iconic, very on brand for Tech Heuer. This year, I guess it's a year of a green dial. So we have the same watch just with the green dial. To refresh your memory, it comes in a stainless steel 42 millimeter case diameter. It's about 14.3 millimeters 
in case thickness and about 48.6 millimeters in lock to lock distance. The movement here is the in house caliber TH20 09. Of course, it's an automatic tourbillon movement with a chronograph complication. It's a COSC certified movement that beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour and it has 65 hours of power reserve. Tag Heuer has these. Uh, sort of higher end movements. So I don't know why they chose to go with such a cheap movement on the other watch. But that's besides the point. We're talking about this new Turbion model. As far as the availability and pricing, this will be their permanent collection. So it's not a limited edition. And it's priced at 23,500 Swiss francs. So clearly, Tag Heuer is trying to go into this higher price category uh, with these two new releases. But I don't know how many people will actually pay over $20,000 for a Tag Heuer. But what do you guys think? Would you pay over $20,000 for a Tag Heuer? Leave your comments below. Next up is a Hublot MP10 Turbion Weight Energy System. I rarely talk about Hublot on this channel, but they do have some crazy engineering with some of their models. I think this model here has that crazy over the top look and of course a lot of engineering and uh, research and development went into creating a watch like this. But my problem with it, it's not that it's crazy looking, I just think it's not crazy enough. Hublot has this model called MP05 La Ferrari edition, and I'm sure you've seen it online because it's this crazy watch with the 50 day power reserve. You actually have a little screwdriver that you have to put into the watch and kind of wind all the barrels because it has so much power reserve that it will uh, bleed your hands trying to actually manually wind it. So that watch has that crazy selling feature. This watch here tells time in a very interesting way. As you can see, there are several barrels, they rotate and they tell time and each rotating disc is even labeled for easier time telling, which is all great. It also has a turbine function, which is not an easy function to create. But my problem with this watch is that it only has 48 hours of power reserve. So essentially it has all this craziness going on at the same time, none of the craziness. It doesn't have that crazy feature. This watch costs $250,000 and yes, it looks kind of interesting, but other than its looks and the tourbillon, it doesn't really have anything special about it. Again, Harkening back to that LaFerrari edition, you can show off in front of your friends because let's be honest, that's why you would buy one of these watches. So Hublot creating this watch, sort of this crazy over the top design, but without that sort of standout feature, I think is a bit of a miss. So unfortunately, I'm gonna keep my $250,000 to myself. Otherwise, I would totally go out to my local mall and pick one of these watches up. And that's it. That's the video for this week. Those were the releases that I wanted to highlight. Please leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what releases stood out to you personally. I always enjoy reading your comments. Also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel for more videos like this and we'll see you next time.